A key pledge of the new Liberal Democrat administration was to prepare a new planning framework that will guide future development in Woking Town Centre, ending the uncertainty over what building designs might be considered acceptable. Known as the Master Plan, the document will establish an overarching vision that will enable sustainable growth and development, such as new homes that meet the needs of residents, a thriving retail and business environment, as well as strengthening Woking's cultural and leisure offer. Informed by robust evidence and a series of engagement sessions with Woking residents panel members late last year, the master plan sets out detailed standards and principles such as building heights and density. With the master plan now drafted, it's over to you to tell us your opinions during the comprehensive 12-week public consultation. By participating in this consultation, we can all shape the future development of Woking Town Centre together. Please continue watching to find out more about the 12-week master plan consultation and how you can have your say. We know planning can be complicated, so we've split our master plan into 10 topic areas to help you navigate your way through. So what are those 10 topic areas? Well, let me begin with the economy, in the heart of our new retail, leisure and residential development at Victoria Place. Like all town centres, Woking's economy has faced a challenging few years. The master plan seeks to improve Woking's status as an economic hub by continuing to promote the town as a place for investment and somewhere that people want to live, work and play. We want a vibrant and diverse town centre that is agile, able to respond and adapt to the economic challenges ahead. How do you see the town centre's future? How can we address the post-pandemic economic challenges ahead of us? Despite being a relatively new town, the town centre has a rich heritage that includes listed buildings and a conservation area. The master plan sets out how to protect and enhance these assets and identifies how they can be celebrated and enjoyed by future generations. One project identified in this section is a proposal to move the town gate, expanding Jubilee Square's public space to enhance the setting of Christchurch. What's your opinion of how to further enhance Woking's heritage assets? How would you like to see such assets celebrated in the future? Developers can play a vital role in the health and well-being of our communities by incorporating green initiatives within urban developments. Introducing new green spaces such as pocket parks, planting trees or creating living walls are all important, as well as better connecting us to nature by improving access to nearby green spaces. Do you agree with these recommendations? Do you have suggestions that would help green our street and public spaces? Water is a natural part of our environment. However, urban development can increase the risk of flooding if measures are not taken to minimise effects. Developers should actively seek to reduce the impact of their developments through practical measures such as incorporating rainwater gardens, surface water tree pits and sustainable urban drainage systems. With our environment predicted to change, do you agree with these proposals? What would you like to see more of to mitigate the future effects of climate change? With tenants moving in, you join me in the recently completed Marches development, the residential element of the Victoria Place scheme. Town centres offer opportunities to create unique urban living experiences that cater for different types of lifestyle, which may otherwise not be achievable in other parts of the borough. Yet such development must be sustainable, be of a high quality design, have the right housing mix, incorporate green infrastructure and provide the right amenities for residents. Do you agree or disagree with the master plan taking a design-led approach to determine the number of new homes in the town centre? Do you agree or disagree that the town centre is the most sustainable location for the type of housing proposed in the master plan? The recently opened Paul Road Energy Centre generates low carbon heat and power to the new Victoria Place development. This is a good example of where development must be supported by adequate and appropriate infrastructure, such as roads and schools. Our master plan considers ways we expect the need for new infrastructure to grow. It then sets out ways and approaches to meeting this need. In your opinion, what are the key elements of infrastructure or services needed to support future town centre development? Over the past decade, Woking has cultivated a welcoming and vibrant leisure and cultural offer. There's scope to capitalise on Woking's growing culinary reputation, 
expand the town's evening economy and create a cultural destination that meets the expectations of residents, workers and visitors. Flexible and adaptable public spaces should be designed to reflect changing and emerging activities and events, adding interest and animation. What is your view on expanding Woking's evening economy? What leisure and cultural activities would you like to see more of in the town centre? Sustainable construction sets out what development must achieve to be acceptable. Making sure the borough's carbon neutral targets are met, responds to challenges of climate change and provides best practice examples like the WWF UK building behind me. Sustainable construction could include measures such as decarbonisation of heat and power supplies, electric vehicle charging points, rainwater gardens and biodiversity enhancements. What's your opinion of these sorts of measures to support future sustainable construction methods? We understand that many residents have voiced their concerns over the proposed construction and number of tall buildings in Woking Town Centre, which is why a key part of our master plan is our townscape strategy. It offers an insight into what Woking skyline could look like and suggests the type and heights of development in different parts of the town centre. What's your opinion of Woking's proposed skyline? How tall should buildings in the town centre be whilst balancing the need to provide convenient, quality homes for the future? We need to ensure that everyone can get to and around Woking Town Centre, easily and safely by sustainable means. Improving sustainable travel options such as walking, cycling and public transport make it easier, safer and more pleasant to travel short distances and would help improve connectivity and reduce congestion. Do you agree or disagree that priority should be given to walking, cycling and public transport over cars in the town centre? This is just a broad summary of what's proposed in our Town Centre Master Plan. It's now over to you to tell us your opinions. Before telling us your views, it's important you read and understand all the information available so you can give us your informed response. Please do check our website for specific times, dates and venues. The consultation will end on Monday the 17th of October 2022. We look forward to hearing your views on the future development of Woking Town Centre.